Okay, um, so we have started recording right now, and uh, I'll just recap uh, very fast. So we're going to cover setting up. Uh, we're going to cover setting up a sort of NFT smart contract and then interact with it from our DApp. Uh, and yeah, let's continue. So we have a function save mint, which we'll use to mint the uh, mint the smart contract itself. And uh, in this in this one, uh, what we are doing is not passing the URI in the input, but we are uh, but we are taking the counter itself and just adding it to it. So basically, the images uh, will be sort of like uh, you know this and then one dot jpg and so on. So these will be some of the images that we can sort of mint, right? And because to make it simple, so that we don't have to worry too much about the other stuff. Right? And uh, once you're ready, good to go. Uh, just uh, just connect your MetaMask and uh, the Yoshima EVM testnet. In the last session, we uh, did that. But if you're not aware of how to do that, you can just go to EVM Toolkit and connect your wallet, and it should also prompt up to connect uh, add Yoshima EVM network. Uh, get some uh, also balance in your faucet because this will require like when you deploy it will require some gas fee and yeah and this smart counter also has a burn which so you can burn your uh, nfts as well and to get a token uri right so once once you deploy you will get like something like this an address like this and uh, you also want to view that so i just deployed it like right before 10 minutes ago before this session started so you will see that, uh, and I try to mint one. So the contract is uh, this contract. And so you'll see all the transactions here. So I only deployed and I did one transaction, one mint on this. So we can do this right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get going. Right. So once you have deployed it, um, very simple front end, which is in React.js right now. And uh, in the env file, I have just added like the contract address here. So what we are doing is when the page loads, uh, we are essentially sort of connecting our uh, reading from the wallet itself and the API, and we will get all the and we we will get sort of all the all the NFTs. So we have written a function called fetch NFT, which will get the NFTs. Now let's see how is it actually working, right? Because with ethers.js. So what's really happening is first we we are importing ethers.js right, and you can just follow the docs for that. So once you install, um, you don't need to do beta beta exports. You can just do ethers as well if you want. And uh, once you install, you can actually import using this, or if you are you know using, um, so you you can you can import specific uh, classes as well. But let's just import everything right, and then we'll figure out what we need. Um, however, if you're doing it on the like a like a vanilla JS or something, then you can also import uh, like from using using Browserify or something, right? Uh, you can also use like a require or something if you are using the previous versions like ES uh, six earlier and stuff. And once you're there, once you're there, you can actually connect with Ethereum, right? Um, but if you are let's say uh, connected to connected to MetaMask. You can just connect to the browser provider, whatever is available. So MetaMask and other whatever follows the EIP double one nine three standard um, browser wallets should support this. So you can actually like call printed on Ethereum, and if it is injected there, your provider will sort of read from it. So we are also trying to do something similar to there in, uh, here as well, where we're calling the Web three provider, and we are we are catching printed on Ethereum from there. I hope the font is visible. Right. Um, so from there we got the um, the provider client, and ABI is something that every smart contract sort of generates when we compile it. Right. You from Remix, you can come, you can just copy it from here. If you're using Hardhat, then after running uh, a Hardhat compile, you will get all the ABI in the in the in the in the file itself in the cache file. Right. So you can do it from there. So you can just copy the ABI from here and you can sort of deploy it. Uh, so here we have saved all the ABI.json over here and the contract here. You don't need to, you don't need to actually save the contract over here, but I've just added it. ABI is all you need for your smart contracts to work. Now, how we use the ABI, we'll come to that. 
Uh, but yeah, first you have to say you initialize the provider. Now you have to create a contract client. You need a contract client because you need to you need to connect your provider. So the provider the provider is actually doing is only connecting to the network, right? And is creating a client object for that. But what the contract client will do is connect to the connect to your contract in the network, right? So once you created the provider, uh, yeah, we, we need a signer. Uh, what the the difference is with provider, you can call any contract. Uh, any contracts or view functions, right? So if there are any view functions in here, for example, here, if we, we have deployed it, so we can see all these functions, we can still call it with the provider itself. But to call any of these functions, which is state changing functions, you will need a signer. So essentially you're saying that, okay, I, I need to sign this, uh, I need to sign this transaction. Now, since this is using a browser wallet, we won't need to save our private key uh, anywhere locally, we can just uh, call get signer, and uh, this will sort of and when whenever we whenever we call the the function with a signer, it will invoke the uh, pop up which happens in MetaMask, and it will sort of uh, uh, on the you will have to approve it on the UI itself, right? Um, right. Now there are some functions that we can use like request accounts. So whenever it is connecting for the first time, we'll just see request accounts and get the default account, which is the first one. And uh, they, that we can sort of log in our in our own uh, here, right? So let us try to refresh this, and here you will see that uh, okay, the, the the provider came up, but the default contract is not coming up. So the wallet might not be connected to that but uh, we will still be able to uh, sort of fetch the accounts okay so here we, we get the default account here right so basically we have fetched the wallet successfully here the connected the connection part okay we'll worry about the error later but yeah and uh, there uh, thereafter we need the address of the contract and the abi to create a contract instance right and when we create the contract instance, we're just logging that as well here. So here you will see that you know, all the addresses that that is, all, all the for all the methods that is available for this contract can be uh, seen in this particular instance. So we have loaded this particular instance now, right? And we should be you know good to go. So when our home page actually loads, uh, what we are what we are doing is we will uh, yeah first we will get the first we get the contract instance right. Uh, we'll get the uh, contract address here and then we will connect the wallet handler right uh, once we connect the wallet handler we are fetching the nfts right and what this fetch nft is doing is it's essentially checking like if this is the owner so whatever owner i am right and it will it will fetch all that it, it is putting it into this object nfts right and uh, we are we are just creating this object nfts and uh, we are putting like token id uh, owner and uri inside it Right, and here we are displaying the same thing. We are displaying the NFT ID, and we are displaying the owner. So this is this is what we are going to do. Uh, so let's try to uh, mint another uh, another NFT. Make sure you're on the same one because this safe mint uh, function might not work otherwise. We have to approve it. So we'll see how to do that as well. Right. So let's try to mint another NFT. So when you click on that, this will automatically like go to the first like one dot JPEG. And uh, the pop up should have come. What happened? Okay, so it came like pending, but uh, I did not populate it. Let's try to click again. Oh, this time it came up. Um, so now it's saying that you know it's, it's charging us some gas fee to mint it um which could be very like currently it's just not so it doesn't really matter but ultimately it should be very nominal and uh, once it is minted uh, we'll see the confirmation over here okay it says unapproved Okay, it's errored out. 
let's see what is error uh non serial so probably it is because it two times uh so the, one of the simple ways to sort of avoid this error is to actually just uh, wait this is, this is in pending state so let's just wait for a couple of seconds either it will fail or or you can either you can cancel it as well right while it's in uh while it's still in the pending state let's just cancel okay let's just wait a couple of seconds then we'll cancel it all right uh one of the easiest ways is to sort of just uh, uh clear your local console uh, which is the activity tab data now this will delete um, all the activity tab data but it won't delete any of your balances or tokens from your wallet um, you can do this if you if you are getting a non mismatch error uh, suddenly because uh, you have sent either two transactions and your metamask okay so it seems like the evm testnet is currently facing issues so bad time to show a demo is it down so there must be some connection issues right now all right uh, it seems like it is having trouble connecting to the network but this is connected so the network is up probably the node that the json rpc public node is down Okay, we'll check this back in a second. Um, but if you want to check it out, this is the this is the repository, um, and this uh, I wrote last year sometime when we were doing the test for ISDD uh, testnet. And uh, if you want to just check out the vanilla side of it, you can go to the master branch, and there is like just the pure pure vanilla JS based, and you can actually. You, you can you can actually fetch everything from here itself so uh, using just normal js no react involved in here right and uh, i'm actually writing i was writing another one uh, but it couldn't finish it in time so i thought i'll just demo this only hmm. anyway i was writing another uh, contract for uh, to add to the demo so i'll create this later on and i'll, I'll publish it on github uh, so maybe we can see it next time. All right. Uh, if it if it comes back, I can show the rest of it. But ideally, what will what should happen is when we once you mint it, right? Uh, another card will sort of pop up here, and we'll be able to see that. Right. So that's more or less about it. And yeah, we can we can actually uh, go back to the item cards. This part is purely JS based, right? and we can uh, display whatever whatever other details we want on this particular card and yeah basically that's about it and any function that we want to call let's say the owner of right so you can take check out the functions from here let's say i'm calling the same owner of here so we can check the owner of the first token uh, which is this address and we can check the owner of the second token which is not there so it says invalid token id right uh, because the token ID uh, one is not minted yet, right? And if you see the first URI, uh, it shows the URI, right? We show the second one, it will say invalid token URI again. Uh, so, so these are the two functions that we are calling right now, owner drop and uh, token URI. There are other functions as well, uh, which you can get. It uh, has no response, so it called returned basically Right. Uh, this error it says that it has uh, response has no error or result for request. So this actually failed, but ultimately it should uh, just just return you that okay this this doesn't exist this token URI. So you, you don't really not getting anything. 
and you could even get the balance of a particular owner as well. So you could display various things from your contract and you can call using the same contract client. So the contract client becomes like the very core of things. And this, this is as simple as it can get. And from here on, it, it might get more and more, uh, you, you can make it as complex as you want or as simple as you want. Right? Um, there are some, I think, uh, tutorials already available around it. Um, so I created a voting DAB. Uh, which I have mentioned over here. And uh, you can actually create vote and to use using the contract signer object itself, right? Using the contract client and you can connect to the and, and create contract signer and you can vote accordingly. And again, you can get like uh, a value a, a value of how many votes has been cast directly from the smart contract because everything is being recorded in that way. Is it back? Uh, it's probably right, just still trying to connect. So we can end the small session for today here and uh, open it up for questions. If it comes back, we can just play around a little bit more. So any questions so far on this or something else if you want to talk about? So the Shimmer Network does have now the ETM. Um, and if I'm calling a function to this uh, from the smart contract deployed on the Shimmer EDM, is it um, any faster or slower than the standard Ethereum EDM? Uh, is it faster or slower than which one? When the uh, EVM on Ethereum. Yeah, on Ethereum, okay. Um, so I think for now, the speed is uh, sort of comparable, but speed will increase uh, because if you see the average block time is uh, uh, the actual number of total transactions, I think the TPS is quite low right now, um, but that should increase at least from as compared to Ethereum, it will, it will definitely increase. Um, as we move, watch, as we add more nodes, uh, currently with the with the Shishima, that pilot campaign, there are a lot more transactions which is happening. Uh, so I think uh, the number of TP, the, the TPS right now is quite low, like uh, three to four TPS. Uh, and, but that, that should increase uh, pretty soon. So I wouldn't really worry about that. Nice, thanks. Yeah, it seems this is working, but somehow MetaMask is having trouble connecting. Okay, any other questions around Shima EVM or we can go back to Shima questions? All right. Okay, we can talk about uh, the other things that maybe you're working on.
And I want to, maybe I want to talk about uh, gas fees. So if I want to talk about uh, talk to a um, contract, uh, how much gas fees can I expect on the Shimmer VM? Um, right now, so far, what I have seen is uh, to deploy a contract, it costs roughly around two SMR, and uh, to interact with it, it costs around zero point five to zero point seven something on an average for me. Um, but uh, we can actually look into the, the cash price uh, from here itself, right? Uh, so cash tracker is one on slow and fast, it becomes so something around that, I think uh, the one to 1 1.5 way you will have to, you'll be charged. And compared to the Ethereum EVM, how much is that? Um, I think that wouldn't be fair comparison because uh, because Ethereum EVM will have a lot more higher gas, right? There's a, a, and this is, this is obviously testnet, so that wouldn't really be a fair uh, mm. wouldn't be a fair comparison. So, so that will be like a lot more higher. Even if this goes live on mainnet, this will still be much much lower uh, because this will be a new network. Uh, but after let's say we have similar loads on this on on you know, Shema EVM network, then maybe we can compare the cash price and see. For now, this will cost low, but yeah. Okay, if there are no questions, uh, we can just hang around. What's happening? So I was building a new uh, demo code base actually. You can probably do that now. now. Hello. Hello. Hey, Suvash. Yeah, so I have this one question that uh, I was able to connect to the Koshimar uh, uh, Koshima software, not software uh, through OSP. Uh -huh. And for that, I didn't need it to open the ports. Uh, but for Hornet, I have to. So is it basically like the Koshimar didn't need it, those uh, settings? No, it should, but I think uh, I think uh, y y y you would have already opened those ports or it's connected via the AT port, right? Like, did you have to configure any port? Uh, because I'm not, I have not, uh, yeah, I've not checked Toshiba in a while, so probably they would have changed the ports that they are working on. Yeah, I had opened the ports locally, but no such uh, port that was uh, opened outside my firewall. Or I will say oh, no such public IP address stuff. Right, right. I I I think you still need to open, but I'm I'm not sure if. Uh, um, so I my only guess can be that uh, it 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 might be that um, the 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 ports are open by default, or it is just connecting with the. Uh, via the AT port or something which is already open so you didn't need to open it exclusively i'm not sure exactly we'll have to check where is the koshima docs okay i think we're changing the structure also a little bit of wiki so Finding things will become a lot more easier. OK, 
Okay, where was this? Okay, inside learning. Okay. Why is it inside learning? So see, it is uh, communicating via ATAT. -AT, so it it probably would have been open by default for you. The HTTP API and the dashboard is ATAT -AT one. So I imagine maybe it is already open for you uh, from earlier. Yeah, here. Why has the um, API port moved to ATAT? -AT? Wasn't it fourteen uh, six to five? That's the auto peering port. No, no, 14, 6 to 5, not 6. Ah, okay, okay. Probably they would have moved, right? I'm not sure again. I haven't looked into this in a long time, actually. Uh, yeah, so probably it would have moved the ports. Since we started using Hornet for Wasp, I have not really looked into it. So she not up to that. Oh, there's a chat tab as well. Interesting. Hey. Hello. Yeah. Uh, could you hear me when I said about uh, sharing the document? Sorry. Uh, just now I tried saying something. Could you hear me? Not really. I just heard you when you said hello. Did you say something? Uh, about so. That? Okay. So what I was saying was that uh, can I share one document with you on Discord? Uh, and I just want you to go have a quick go through it and uh, just let me know what exactly was that setup which I was using earlier. Can you please do that? Yeah, sure. Uh, it was IOTA setup itself, but it was a different kind of a setup. Mm -hmm. Sure. I have shared it with you. You can check. Okay, ready to share. On the chat. On the chat. Personal, not on any okay. of the channels. Since that's not a documentation from my oh, time, from somewhere else. I don't see your chat. Okay, I'll try to find it. Hang on.
you can find it in the recording of our meetings chat office open office hour meeting chat yeah, yeah i uh, actually got your dm Right, let's try to see. Ah, hang on. Yes, sir. This is the one. Okay, and uh, what was the question? So my question was, what exactly was the setup? I mean, I was able to implement all my requirements using this setup. But as you know that now Koshimar has been uh, like changed to Hornet, like we have switched to Hornet. So we have to use Hornet. So is it not possible to do something similar in Hornet? Yeah, 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 so just that here instead of Goshima, you're using uh, you're using Hotnet. The rest of the stuff is still same, right? And obviously the Poly network is the R2 kind of thing. So, so basically here instead of Goshima, you're just using Hotnet. That's all. And you, you don't need the TXT plugin anymore. That's a Goshima thing. Uh, we will need the INX thing. And uh, yeah, you can actually do that. Uh, you can actually so this is, this is the manual setup right and we used to do this earlier uh, but now uh, we are doing everything via uh, uh, via docker you can you can also do this also uh, but uh, I, I don't think uh, we are using rocks db i'm not sure if we are still using rocks db or this, this this might be a little outdated actually because um but uh, okay, okay, got it. But can you check the config.json that is provided with the Koshimer in this setup? Uh, it's somewhere around. Uh, can you scroll a bit above? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See that config.json? Can you click on it? Yeah, this one. So which which network was it accessing exactly? Or was it creating a private network? Uh, so this will this will actually uh, like just create its own network uh, as a setup its its own Koshima node right, and it's not connected to any any anything else. So you'll need to add peers separately into it. Um, oh wait, there is an entry node given here, so probably it is connected to the main net, uh, the the beta network as, as well. So this we were using earlier with IC testnet, you know. So this is that setup. I remember this. Uh, I remember this article. It's probably will be like a year okay. or something, right? Yeah, twenty one September. Yeah. So it's is around that time, like I see, uh, I see testnet time. Okay. Okay. Got your point. So is there any such provision for an testnet? Because see, look, uh, my organization is, won't allow. Uh, to communicate to the uh, through and public IP and all that, so we need to for development purpose we need to use such a private setup. Huh, so there is a local setup now. You can still use that. Uh, but local setup doesn't has the provision of multiple nodes. And uh, talking about private tangle setup, I checked it uh, since it has multiple or net nodes, mm -hmm. but the INX uh, doesn't works. In the private tangle setup, you can check that to at your your it. Okay, I okay, rejected the uh, private tangle, uh, but I tested with the. Uh, so, if you just need for development purpose, you can just set up. Uh, let's say. This this local setup, this one doesn't work, because this works out of the box for me. Yeah, yeah, this works, this works, but uh -huh. as I said, it only has one single wasp node and uh, I want to do some development and testing related to two or three uh, wasp nodes, wherein two or three wasp nodes are involved, like a committee of nodes are involved. Okay. 
right that is probably not here right now in that case you need to build it from uh, uh, this thing so you can i think use wasp cluster where is that yeah cluster uh, so wasp cluster will uh, solve your this thing so uh, re with your requirement and uh, so you can start the Goshima, node, Goshima network with two nodes. Uh, you can start with, uh, let's say, four wasp nodes and no more Goshima nodes. So you can decide how many nodes you want. You can configure like that. Okay, okay. I will look into this right up. Okay, thank you. This is not actually on the wiki right now, and uh, the wiki restructuring will happen soon. So, a lot more information will come on the wiki, wiki about these. Uh, is it there? I'm not sure if we have the cluster. No, I don't think the cluster is on the wiki. Right? As much as I know, it's not. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, you can use uh, with this as well. This will work. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or doubts around Shema Shema IBM? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, in that case, uh, I'll figure out the issue with the mic on Discord now because last week I figured it out with, I'm stopping the recording for now. So we will resume next week. Next week we will try to cover a um, little bit around the, uh, the ISC magic contracts and we'll try to move some funds from L1 to L2 and then L2 to L1. Uh, it can be the native tokens and uh, maybe a couple of NFTs or uh, native tokens as well and obviously smr so we'll try to do that um, nice sounds exciting i'm really excited yeah 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 i see magic contract is one of the unique features of uh, shima evm so i hope they'll fix it but there is some examples right now so this week we'll work on creating some examples so that we can talk about it in next week's call Okay, um, I think uh, stop the recording for this one.